Today on Gamers Couch. Turn by turn, or Zug um Zug, or Ticket, ticket to Ride. ride. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Welcome to the Gamers Couch. I'm Sarah, the artist behind Pinsel Geschichten, and this is my husband, Daniel. And we're talking board games on Sunday. And today is no different. So, welcome to the vlog. And today we have a classic game on the couch, which is Ticket to Ride, or Zug um Zug, as or, we say. Or turn by turn navigation. So, if you translate Zug um Zug back into English, that would be turn by turn. Or train by train. <laughs> It also yeah. means Zug. Whatever. So we're uh, going into rules and gameplay first. Then we talk about what we like or maybe not like about a game. And then we finish up the video with funny stories and experiences that we had. So I always... Blah, blah, blah. Vzna, have vzna, I, yeah. Coffee. Talking. Cer cer certainly. I, I agree to that. So we, we talked, I think couple of times about Ticket to Ride. It is not as prominent in our weekly gaming as it is for some people. That being said, we never talked about Ticket to Ride and uh, we kind of have to catch up, catch up on that. Um, obviously it's a, a fairly well-known family game by, by now and if you have it already or know it already, probably we won't tell you something new about it. Um, this is kind of to fill the gap in our list of games that we have and that we actually quite enjoy playing. Um, and if you don't know that game, maybe it's something for you. It's certainly worth a look at uh, from a family gaming point of view. Um, also, small disclaimer, this is Ticket to Ride, the Europe edition. Why? Because we're in Europe. That must be enough for you for as a justification for us not playing the American version. Um, also, that makes more of, uh, sense for us in terms of uh, towns and cities you uh, make your trains move from and to. But I guess you will see that now. Once I unfold it, once I killed myself trying to unfold this... Don't hurt your board. shoulder again. So that's Europe now. Uh, so that's Europe. You're, I'm in Essen. You're welcome. In fact, that is, I think, one of the, the Ow. <laughs> one of the I'm holding that one of the nice little things. There's there's Essen on on here, and I'm not sure, but I would assume that Essen is on there simply because of the Spielemesse that that happens there every year. Um, well, because in, in terms of German cities, Berlin, Frankfurt, Munich. Mm. Um, Cologne would be the more prominent choice that's closer to Essen or Düsseldorf. Uh, so I would assume that uh, Essen is a is a nod to uh, to, to us, the the board game nerds. Yeah, no, no. Right. Fun fact for you who well may or may not know where we live. We actually live pretty close by to to Essen, yeah. so. Um, Maybe that's the reason we really like board games. Probably not, because we liked board games before we even knew that there's the Spiel in Essen. However, so what are you doing in this game? Uh, as you might have seen, and I'm, excuse me while I'm just referring to the small part of the map, uh, what you want to do is build train uh, connections between the cities. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you grab a couple of these uh, ticket cards that describe a, well, a specific uh, travel destination. So Kiev to Sochi, or Berlin to Moskva, or Zurich to Brandisi. Brandisi, or, Brandisi, Brandisi. It's oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm. I'm have Italiano. A, I have a reading impediment. Whatever. Um, yeah, when it comes to European cities only. <laughs> Berlin to Roma. Here we have Athena to Angora. So it's a uh, pullover to whatever. <laughs> and then you can go from uh, Angora to Kharkov. So you get the gist. Uh, the idea is each 
each of these cards tells you uh, where the cities are roughly that's always a challenge finding where they are on the map then without telling the others because that is secret knowledge and they also come with a little point value which will be most important at the end of the game because that's what you get for having a connection between those two cities but beware if you don't then these are negative points and get deduced from uh, deducted i'm sorry from whatever you do so now you may have I wanna something see to play if you... with no 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 i'm just oh okay while you have a speech impediment when it comes to european cities i do have a hearing and understanding when from... it comes to me yeah I, well, no I no no it. just when you talk about Euro european cities i was yeah i was like huh so what to, to give you give you uh, a, a better idea of what happens is through the game you try to build the connections between the the cities uh, some are easier than others for example uh if you try to, uh, Lis Lisbon to Madrid, you just need three trains and they have to be purple trains. You can already see that they're different. I'm sorry. I don't know what's so funny, but. Wait, you said purple train, and in my head, Prince is yeah. singing purple, purple train. train. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. When the doves fly, <laughs> or something like that. I'm so sorry, honey. <laughs> Oh, I'm so easily amused. Different, different <laughs> routes have different colors. To be able to place trains on a route, you will start drawing these colorful train cards and uh, you may have guessed it to uh, build a, a route that needs three purple trains. You have to discard three purple train cards. <laughs> And the next game of Couch will be me alone because <laughs> so uh, sorry. it's really hard. Oh, yes, I'm trying so hard to keep it together. <laughs> I'm failing. <laughs> can you can you maybe say violet train? Then it doesn't buzz in my head. Anymore. So the magenta train. Yeah, the telecom train. That's fair as well. We don't get money from them for mentioning that. Pay us money! No. Oh. <clears throat> Again, back. So you would you would discard, uh, for that particular <sighs> route, you would discard three of those. Then you grab that many trains of your color and uh, this game comes with little plastic wagon, train wagons, and then you will place them on uh, that route and show everybody else that you have the longer route or the longest route at least some route that they don't have because once you've placed your trains nobody else can claim that path and that is kind of crucial uh, because you will be competing with other players not only just for building routes because they your uh, yield points um, but also because they that will block them from creating routes that they need to do there are different colors as i said i'm just holding those up for your leisure uh, and then there's also the, the, the locomotive the, the locomotive um does it have an, another name that i'm blanking on whatever it's this card is kind of the joker and counts as every color in in the game and can be placed well as a as a joker card However, there's some um, some uh, connections that require you to play these trains, like this one here, that uh, says, uh, first of all, it's gray, so you, uh, gray meaning means that you can play any color that you want, but it has to be the same color. So let's say if you, let's say you want to do this for space connection in gray you can play for yellow cards for green cards for red cards it doesn't matter but they have to be the same color it's a little bit different with these here which are gray which could be any color but there you have the little uh, locomotive icon on there so you at least have to play one locomotive to uh, be able to claim that uh, that route then there's uh, also different uh, uh, other things like these they're called tunnels with a little black border around them the way that works is here again or let's take this one so that would mean you have to play three 
black or three white cards to build that path. However, since that it is a, is a, is a tunnel, what will happen is uh, you have a, a, a stash of these cards and you will flip them over and for every card of the same color that you use to build the tunnel, you have to play another one of those. So the tunnel is kind of risky. Uh, if you're lucky, you get away with just well, paying three black cards to build the tunnel, but if you're unlucky, it could cost up to six if you, well, if you're really unlucky and draw six, uh, six cards while flipping those over. Uh, so you progress in, in uh, building up all those, uh, those paths and uh, you get different points immediately for building a path. If it's just one train long, then you get one point, two for two, three for three, and... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, three uh, is four. No, it's on, on this one. Um, so you get one for one, two for two, but you then uh, starting with three trains you get four points, Four gives you seven, six gives you fifteen, and eight gives you twenty-one, which is a lot um, to to work with. Um, so you kind of you want to save cards up to build the long pass to get a lot of points, but you also want to fulfill your ticket contracts um, and don't want to get cut off by the other players. So that's one of the strategic parts that come in, uh, with this game. So let's talk about what you can actually do on your turn. Um, per default, you can only do one action, meaning you can either build a route if you have the cards on hand, you can draw new cards, uh, like new uh, of these train cards, you'll always have five of them face up, um, and you can pick two of those, or one locomotive face up, face up card. Or you can pick cards face down from uh, from the pile, and if you're extremely lucky and uh, this is not fake at all, and pick a card and that is a locomotive, then you got lucky and uh, might draw even two locomotives. But that's the thing: you draw two cards, either open or a face face down, or one face up locomotive card. If you already draw, drew a card and then a locomotive comes out tough luck, you may not pick it. Um, you may also draw new tickets. Uh, so you, what will happen then is you draw three cards, choose one and the others uh, go back under or back uh, shuffled into, into the stash. Um, the, third, no, the fourth option of, of what you can do no, I was what? thinking this one. Yeah, I was no, like, I was counting my head. No, I was, huh? I was thinking, okay, draw cards, but no, uh, that's actually two different uh, actions. Um, so you either draw the color cards to build routes or you call, uh, draw the uh, ticket cards. Um, and last but not least, you may build a little nice train station. These are incredibly useful later in the game because they allow you to use one route of, an, uh, of another player. Uh, meaning, if you have a ticket, and for some reason the last mile to Vilno is already claimed by another player, you may play these houses, and you have three of them, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. You have three of those to add another leg to your route that you couldn't otherwise access or would have to have have to build around to to get to that city. Unfortunately. This only counts for one leg of another player, and you kind of have to decide at the end of the game which leg it's going to be. So you can't use the train station to tie in multiple uh, multiple legs. So if you're extremely unlucky and need to get to two cities that are fairly close to, to another and both are already claimed, or both routes there are claimed by other players, you might have to build around at least one of them, or, well, except that you get a uh, point deducted uh, for uh, not completing your contract, your ticket. These, by the way, uh, the first one costs one card, uh, one of these color cards to play. The second one costs two, and again, they have to be the same color. And the third one costs three. If you don't build the train stations because you're a strategic mastermind, you will get bonus points for them at the end of the game. Um, each one will be score you four points in total. Which
which is nothing to sneeze at. It's not well, really great, but it's all right. Um, so at the beginning of the game, you start out with um, three of these uh, well, generic short tickets and one of those blue long tickets, uh, which are way more difficult to achieve, but give a bunch of points, like 21 points for Cadiz to Stockholm, or Edinburgh to Athene, or what do we have here? Lisbon to Danzig, um, Palermo, Moscow, and so on. So these are a bit more tougher to, to achieve. Uh, there's only you may discard uh, up to two cards of those four, and you, if you think that's too tough to do, you can happily discard those. There's no rule against that, um, but you'll have to have at least two tickets um, you know, starting with the game, or you keep all four, like I did the last time, and we will tell you shortly how well that worked out for me. Um, at the end of the game. Uh, as I said, those tickets are counted, then um, hopefully your routes are already accounted for, so you adjust your points, and uh, you may have seen that there's a point track around the board where you can place your little wooden scoring tokens for each player, and while you're building new routes or claiming new routes, you just advance your scoring track, and at the end of the game, if you happen to be the one with the longest route of your single color, so train stations don't count for that, you get this card, which is worth another 10 points extra. That's it. It's really simple. There's uh, maybe one thing I, I haven't mentioned. Uh, you may have seen that here. There, some cities have two routes connecting to each other. There's only one rule there. Uh, one player may not claim both, so you cannot indefinitely shut down everybody else there. However, if two players already built their trains there and you're the third and want to go there, this is your only option. That's it. The, the game ends as soon as one player has only two, two or fewer uh, trains left. Every player starts with 45 of these. in different noise sizes and colors and are terribly annoying if you're trying to make a video at the same time. Thank God for professional quality microphones that uh, enable me to cut off the, yeah, yeah. the noise there. You can play this uh, two to five ducks or human uh, opponents uh, against each other. No cooperation required at all in this game. There's uh, certainly some cursing, but um, yeah. not too much. It's, it is, you will annoy other players by blocking off paths, but you will not maliciously um, attack other players. So it's, there's no tag that mm. mechanic in the game. And uh, obviously, it's a great way to learn a little bit about your, well, geography uh, stuff that you want to know about. And you can find Ticket to Ride in different flavors. This was Europe. Uh, there's the original American version. Um, I think there's Africa. Mm -hmm. And a couple all of, of the, other ones. And all of them have a different kind of mechanic there's some, added to yeah. them. So, for example, Europe has the tunnels. Yeah. Other continents don't have. They do have something different, but I don't know what. I think one was it Asia or was it Africa that has uh, to have passengers. Uh... I I have no. So, and this kind of goes into the what we like, what we don't like. Uh, this we like ticket to ride, but there's a couple of other games that get way more playtime than than this. Yeah. Um, this is a kind of in our, on our shelf the safe bet if someone would come over and hasn't played board games in a long time yeah, or, all the kids. or uh, and, and we need something that's a little bit simpler, easier to grasp but still thinky enough to um, keep us all occupied for 90 minutes um, or 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, this is that game. It's also nice to, since it comes with so many uh, actual pieces and haptic elements, it's not too abstract. 
Uh, obviously, you could do, get away with uh, having just little wooden sticks represented for, for the trains. But um, yeah, this is nice. Also, great inlay. Insert, not inlay. Inlay is the thing of the tooth. Nothing, nothing to add to that. It's uh, very simple to get out and, and play. Um, if you don't get killed by by the board like uh, Sarah just did. Um, I was just injured. The, you can't kill me that fast. The, the manual is uh, quite short and, well, there's not that much uh, to explain. So, yeah, it's... Th uh, that's fine. We can manage without a 40-minute explanation yeah. part of the video for once. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> it's it, good. It's don't a, worry. It's a simple game. It has a lot of replayability. There's... Uh, um, actually, a lot of strategic tactical thinking in, in this, uh, in terms of do you want to kind of try to be aggressive and cut other players off? Do you want to focus on your tickets and maybe get more tickets? Uh, there, where at the end game, well, maybe you want to try your luck um, and uh, just draw new tickets and see if you may pick one that you have already completed because your network is as vast. Are you trying for the longest route? So there's a couple of interesting choices to make, um, which uh, changes every game. And uh, I think this is one of the games that benefits from having three or more players uh, present uh, simply because there's a higher dynamic, because everybody is trying to build different routes, uh, everybody has different tickets. Um, on a on a one-to-one -one player game, which is entirely feasible, but um, you have more time to pay attention to where the other one mm. is trying to build to expand and it becomes more a game than at least it felt to me uh, a game of how can I block someone the other player from doing what, what they're doing if you're playing with four it is almost impossible to do that because there's three other people who chaos. are a yeah. picking picking away the train cards, the, the color cards that you may need or that you may want uh, and you have to just run with what you can and um, not seldom uh, it happens that you start drawing a lot of cards face down because what's on the table as face up cards nobody wants that <laughs> and so everybody at the table starts going with the face down cards. Yeah. Shall I say my final rating? Because I don't think I have to add it much more to that. So. Can I say my two cents before we rate? Yeah. Yeah? Do You're you... so nice. No, I was was a question. Do you want me to go? No, 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 no. I, I don't wanna go... I don't wanna know your final rating before. You can think about the lovely words. Drink a coffee, I say my two cents. Yeah. So here it here it comes. Are are you paying attention? So um there are certain games that you very likely played at one point until you're 20 years old. So there's the classics like um, Monopoly or Scrabble or Trivial Pursuit that were very, very, very um, well popular and very much played when I was a kid. So these were the games of, of that year. It's about 40 years ago. Next time I bring the nice husband. The, then... <clears throat> the two 20 years phase is, was 40 years ago. So I, I never liked Monopoly. I played it twice, I hated it, never played it again. So that was not one of the popular games that I ever had it's... or played. But I was in love with Scrabble. And then way later, Trouble Pursuit. So, so how much does your hate, hold it, hold it, hate hold it. for Monopoly have to do with capitalism, capitalist pigs being, being raised in a certain environment? No, I didn't mind that because I didn't, I didn't, no, 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 I was, I was not, the, the money factor, I could um, detach that from the game. The game mechanics were just boring to me. Well, the, and there was nothing on top, like no story that would get me into the game. Other mechanics are also boring of other games, but there is something at the game that keeps me entertained. With Monopoly, zero, zero, total fail for my taste. So I, I never liked it, but I was in love with Scrabble and later on with Troll Pursuit. So a few years later, maybe I was... I guess I was around 10 or, yeah, 
almost teenager, you know, like puberty hitting, that game called Settlers of Catan was very popular. But it was a bit too late for me. I didn't have a group around me who was board gamers anymore, and so I never got into that. But I understand that these are, like, the most popular games, everybody knows them. And Ticket to Ride is in that realm. Yeah. So it's one, that's why I say it's a classic game. I think it, um, it finally overtook Monopoly and everybody oh, likes a good game for once well, instead of... Catan already yeah, did that back then. Yeah, but what, what, what I mean is, um, I think, to me, Catan feels... A tiny bit more strategic and it's not as well played with two players which is something that uh, Ticket to Ride is it's nice for two players so I, I some think, I, I guess it's not exactly I, I think, on the on the spot that Catan can, is. Catan is three players on I don't think there's we can. played it with two players but there's a, it's a yeah, it has, it's, it's a, not a sweet spot I think it's a that also was a variant what, whatever. whatever. So what I mean is, it's just as much as a, a classic game and a really solid must-have game when it comes to board games as Monopoly was back then, or Scrabble is, or Quirkle, or uh, Settlers of Catan. But it hits another sweet spot because, um, well, you, you can. It's it's more playable with two players. So I I just like that uh, about. Ticket to Ride in comparison to, for example, the Monopoly game, which I don't think it's a nice game anyways, but even Scrabble is not as much fun, or Quirkle is not as much fun as it is with other players. This one is just as much fun with two players as I enjoyed it with uh, four players, for example. So it just hits a very sweet spot there, and it is one of the classic games. It's a must-have game, I think. Uh, especially when you have kids that you want to get into board gaming or just in experience board gaming uh, at, at one moment in their life. It's like you, you buy the first big board game for your kids, which one is it going to be? There's like five classic uh, games that you're probably offered or recommended and I certainly hope Ticket to Ride is one of them. Because I think for for exactly that group of people, it's a perfect game. As Daniel already said, it doesn't get too much playtime at our house, but that is because we have a very experienced board game group. We take it to uh, my parents' or his parents' house once in a while just to enjoy um, a game that we could play, play while we want to have a lot of talk and interaction at the table that is not connected to the board game. So this is a, a nice game that you can have normal conversations over. And uh, that's why we take this game uh, to our parents' houses more often than we played with our nerd group at our house, where we do have so many other lovely games that get way more playtime. Um, also, um, what what I really like is, this is also one of those games, not being a dinner game though, but it's a game that you can play as two experienced gamers when you listen to a podcast or something. So you just don't want to just sit there and... Nobody does that. You won't. While you listen to podcasts, you can play that um, uh, just like any other of those games that you could talk over or uh, listen to something or watch a movie or whatever alongside playing the game. So I really, really like it for that. Um, another thing that I very much like is that, well, it's I'm, I'm a geography nerd. I love geography. So I ha I'm having a blast when everybody's looking at the bottom. Where's that fucking city? I don't know that one. So he, there, there, there. I know where this. There's so, so many citizens. Blah blah blah. It's like, hmm. Have a blast with that. I know. I know everybody else on the table doing that. The German word for uh, geography nerd in this particular case is called klugscheißer. Mm -hmm. Also 
more than there is another well, smart you, as is you may have heard of. that as, as Sarah said as smart as is the correct translation but no not, it, not when it comes to geography this, it means geography nerd and only for Sarah <laughs> I'm so sorry this is I, I love geography. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't ask me about uh, any chemical things. I have no clue there. I'm not interested, nor am I knowledgeable, but geography, that's my thing. So I like this game just for that. And then there is, of course, the factor that um, it is way more strategic and tactical as you think it to be. And you get into that realm of the strategic or te tactical game while you play. No nobody tells you beforehand too much, like you gotta think while I do this to think about that. You naturally do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you got a train route there, so hmm, how you, can I go around that? So y you get into you don't, the... You don't start, you can't, cannot plan too far ahead right, simply right. because you're limited right. uh, in terms of choices that you have. You yeah, and, don't have enough cards, yeah, you can you, only build one path. And you, you don't get into that game or you don't start that game when somebody explains to you how it's played. You're probably not expecting to have a very heavy strategic tactical game there. Because it's, yeah, I built train routes. Oh, okay, that sounds doable, but there's way more to think about well, and to do while you play it, which... Yeah, I wouldn't call it heavy, but it no, has those elements. I, I don't mean for our yeah. nerd gaming group. I mean for my parents, for hmm. example. When I take those, they, they wouldn't expect to... Um, get that deep into hmm, if I go around there, is it better there? Do I take the blue? Do I, like I, this, they say, okay, I'm I'm drawing cards and then I build the trains that I can play, uh, try uh, that that I can build. But uh, during the game, they automatically get into the the heavy thinking about can do I go left? Do I go right? Can I can I uh, cut him off here or not? Although, Things like that. Although, and it comes naturally. Although the, the motivation for resources is different, I would compare those decisions to the ones you would do in Catan. Where, yes, yes. Where you decide, am I going, am I trying to go up there and get more resources of that? Yeah. Actually... The decision making is fairly, sim uh, fairly similar to Catan, I'd say. No, not no, like you, you I don't... have these resources. I have these train colors. What can I do best? No. How can I? No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that because there's in in Catan you do that to get more resources. Here you build the things to fulfill your contract, of, well, to fulfill your tickets or mm. um, to have okay. the the longest path. In, in Catan, it's more like okay, I need more sheep. So I'm building that direction. Uh, actually, what you said, I, for me, this is uh, pretty much on the same page as Catan when it comes to, to those so-called gateway games To for people who don't play a lot of games to get them into uh, gaming. Um, the thing that I think, uh, for me, for me, this isn't this, I, I wouldn't say I like this more or less than Catan uh, from a, well, a little bit more, but that's for my just purely personal preferences. Both fill two very different spots. Uh, okay. What I really like about Catan is the player-player interaction because you are trading, mm -hmm. uh, you're trying to to cut other people off. You you well, you have a kind of your little empire to to build out here. You are more focused on your singular task, like where I need to go from this city to that city and, and build a route out. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't care that much for other players unless they start blocking your movements in, yeah. in some way or shape, um, which is even less uh, uh, important if you're in a two-player game because... Due to, those, go around due, due to those uh, cities that have two connecting paths. Actually, I, this game starts with two players. I think it, the real game starts with three because then you get into the position where some paths are certainly blocked off for the third player once two players have built that path um, and they have to go around. If you take a look at, the, uh, at our uh, local Rhine-Ruhr district, 
which is obviously on the other side of the TV. North, honey, north. Um, so, so on the east, east, west, west, <laughs> what? Uh, on the east-west axis uh, through Europe, you have these big connecting two two uh, 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 route lines. That uh, if you're playing with three and two players have claimed those, it starts getting really difficult for the third one to actually be able to uh, go on a on a east-west path and and make that possible. Um, so what what I was going to say with with the with the gateway games uh, for me, Catan is more of the social trading interaction, which makes it very interesting. Um, however, uh, due to the nature of having resources allocated uh, pretty much randomly by the roll of some dice, and you will roll the stupid thief robber thing way too often because it's on the seven. Everybody hates it. Uh, actually, that is also the reason why. Personally, I dislike Catan a little bit more because it is, for me, it feels too random, too punishing with that, those die rolls. And uh, newer versions or alternate versions of the Catan have addressed that problem already. Uh, but as a base game comparison, I prefer Ticket to Ride mm -hmm. over, over Catan for yeah. that very reason. However, as I said, the player-to-player -player interaction is not that big. But... As Sarah said, we play this game to also talk to the other players at the table. Um, if you yeah. don't, if you just take a look at the game, maybe one of the slight downsides is if it's not your turn, there's not a lot you can do. You kind of wait until it's your turn again, and then you decide what you're going to do. Because um, while you're, it's not your turn, the cards that are available outside probably are gone or the ones you might want to have might be might be gone um you can only take a look at what the others are doing and if you want to guesstimate where their routes are and obviously if you play this game often enough you will probably start recognizing a patterns. lot of the patterns yeah. uh, and then uh, figure out okay there's some connections that are way more important in the, in the end game than others because they control the uh, central distribution of all routes between the east-west yeah. axis or north-south axis um, which I think is great to have in a game because that means the game stays interesting even if you played it 20 or 30 times yeah. Um, but the, yeah that's so kind of my my assessment in terms of uh, if we're talking about gateway games, I think uh, Catan and this are equally interesting. If you have one or the other, give the other one a try. Um, if you don't, I'd say if you're more interested in a in a trading com communication aspect of a game, go with Catan. If you're more interested in a thinky strategic thing uh, like like this, go with Ticket with to Ride. Geography. Uh, and well, to be honest. There is no wrong choice there. Yeah. Both are yeah. both are great games to get started, and if you are playing with kids, uh, both are uh, great great games. To and get they started teach as well. something. Both of yes. the games they yeah. teach something that is well beneficial to life outside the board game world. So I like that. Also, I I would assume that kids like the yeah. trains yeah uh, um something that we both haven't uh covered yet which is my last comment before we can go into rating is the quality of the game in the box and everything the components are uh very sturdy and um well have a very good quality the artwork is okay but it doesn't the game doesn't request to have a fancy artwork. It's solid and uh, it has some plastic tra trains that my husband can stir to uh, make me nauseous. <laughs> so that is cool uh, also. And the board is lovely. So yeah, it's, it's very good quality, but with a solid artwork, nothing outrageous nothing fancy nothing new there but again i don't expect it to be so we can rate um mm, mm, mm. well it's a 10 for me I, I i thought maybe if there were things that i need to deduct points from but no it's a solid awesome
for the realm that it is in and for the things that I expect it to accomplish. And for you, how many tickets? And seven shoes out of one. Vroom! <laughs> so let's segue in the best part of the video. Funny stories and experiences. Tell me, husband, how often did you win this game? How often have you played this game with a two-player variant? No, that's not true. I mostly play against myself if I play. Oh, you someone. play the iOS or? I actually. I, ah. So there's. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I haven't mentioned this, but there's an uh, iOS version. I think there's also an Android version available of this. Uh, there's certainly one on the PC and uh, available. So if you just want to play by yourself, or uh, well, that came out wrong. But if you play this <laughs> game by yourself. Um, <laughs> There are uh, options out there, or if you want to give that a try without uh, committing to, to buying the board game, um, perfectly fine, um, and you can do that. So we played this game four times, because I checked the list before we filmed. We played this game four, four. times uh, as the two-player. Uh, zero win there. We played it once with four people. Zero win there. Uh, zero win here. Your mom beat me. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I can I was, only... At least I was tied at the last place with my yeah. dad, who yeah. is apparently not only light, slightly colorblind, but heavily colorblind by now, or blind in general. No, in he, rec he recognizes oh. you, but he's colorblind, so in yeah. meanwhile... Well, he no, he's not fully not, colorblind, not really, but not he fully, has but, uh, slight differences between orange and purple, and he has, he has some he, difficulties he had difficult, there. He had difficulty distinguishing between those cards, and um, I want to put that out. Uh, there shouldn't be a reason because uh, if you take a look at the corner, they have little icons on these as well that you will find again on uh, these. Uh, colored spaces here yeah. so yeah once he realized that he got around showing us the cards so that we could tell him what color is there um but the, well for, first of all we got this game um because well it's a classic game and uh, we've been seeing it in our local game store for forever and uh well it was it was just one game to pick up whenever there are not any other games that we want to have at whatever certain visit at our game stop. So um, we picked it up, we played it, and uh, after, I think it was uh, the, the fourth round, uh, you said, or just the two of us playing, um, you said you, you don't want to play for a while now, not that game at least, because he was very frustrated, of course, uh, losing against me uh, like all the time by quite a, more than more than 10 points so I get it and I didn't push it and I was very very curious how it would play with four people so we took it to his parents house and I I was very curious how it would if the, the four player game would play more into your kind of approach in how you oh, play it, this game as it yeah, would in it, mind and it did benefit you to uh, way more than the two player game yeah to 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 be honest the the, that frustration part came from literally the first place where uh, there's you you start uh, losing or not uh, have trouble winning and you don't see why mm, and um, that four times in a row I, I get it there's I get it you don't that the game does not give you a lot of feedback on what went wrong what went went right there's I well there's at least to me it feels like there's not a much to read afterwards in terms of yeah I should have started building these things or something mm. uh, the the four player game I literally lost and I'm fairly certain that I would have won otherwise um, yeah. because I, um, I I what I said initially I grabbed my four cards and said I don't care I'm just going to run with all four tickets uh it, if they are achievable or not, did not matter to me at that point. And uh, I should have known because my uh, longest route was so 
uh, well, it was quite far away from all the other connections and uh, out of the four or five cards I ended up with, with tickets, I managed to build all except for that big 20 points one that put Got me deducted, back yeah. uh, a lot of points. Yeah, um, yeah. otherwise you would, you would have one. But uh, also the... You the way you play this game um, is more quote unquote chaotic than I approach it. I always at the start I in ninety nine point nine percent I will have only two tickets unless my third card is on the route that is the long route. I usually don't keep all of them. You quite often do keep all four tickets and you start building from multiple ways and then connect in the middle. That's kind of like how you build. I don't build like that. I'm way more streamlined and just don't look left, don't look right, just look on the round mm -hmm. and build it. So, But with a four player game, the board being so much more chaotic and so much more trains and stuff on the board, I had to build from two sides, mm. which I... I cringed inside, I didn't like that, but I, I made it work. And you would have won, would you have either um, thrown away the long route at the beginning or would have miraculously um, been, been uh, able to build that one because your chaotic kind of build actually put you ahead. In the game so the uh, and and by the way my the I way, find that very interesting the the way I played I don't play chaotic on purpose I play what cards I actually have available and for most of the time I just couldn't build where I wanted to build because I, the cards were not there yeah so but it's not a chaotic on purpose uh, no I but usually uh, with the two player I keep those cards on my hand yeah I had none of those no I no I mean like um after for five example, rounds. No, no, you for, remember for, that I played yeah, five yeah, yeah. rounds drawing cards? Yeah, same, same. But uh, no, you, you, no, no, you, you said you, you don't play chaotic, you build where you can. Let's say I had the Edinburgh Athena route. And, you, and usually I start in Edinburgh and I just go south. This time I went from south to the north. And then in the middle I couldn't build anymore and I had the Edinburgh part forever on my hand before I played it because it just it makes me cringe <laughs> to build from two sides so um that's where I say you play more chaotic because you don't mind you just put it down and you yeah. connect it in the middle and I just want to go yeah. well, just like that you know and that that is very heavily dependent on what board you're playing in yeah. Europe and America will True. be obviously different yeah um but in in this one uh it, there's you now there's kind of sounds stupid but for those long routes uh it's the endings and the center part are the important things which kind of sounds like the entire route but that's not true what i mean with that is the last mile so the mm. last connecting bit or the last two connecting bits to the long cities and the center part those two uh, ways going east west uh, are super important because uh if if you start building center only and try to spread out, what can happen is that someone else cuts you off on the um, on the outer, on the last mile, and that is really annoying to build around. Um, there's uh, sometimes it's like this Madrid, so if you have to build to Lisbon, uh, you can either go this way around, and this is probably what gets built by another one first because this is only a three train connection. So you have to go the five train connection down here. If you're extremely unlucky, someone else builds this three connection because he needs to go to Cadiz and then you're screwed because then you probably won't even be able to get to here. Um, well, depending, maybe they build down here, maybe they build here. Um, but if someone else needs to go to Madrid, then this is also taken and you have no chance at all. So that game that uh, I lost last time with the four players, I could not even complete my uh, mm. my longest route because one of the legs was already so built up. Yeah. Um, then if you if you think the other way around, what you just described, if you start at the end, uh, you run into the very same problem in the center because it's so... Yeah, Compact. well luckily nobody killed me there and I had two routes that were 
the one, the long one was Edinburgh, Athena, and the other one was Venezia to Constantinople. So they pretty much cross. Um, I could use like a third of the long route I could use for the shorter one. But what I usually do, and of course I did that in this game as well, I, I completed my long route, I completed the short route, and then I'm just... Um, um, I'm, I'm just expanding my long route to get the longest route. I don't buy any more tickets. I don't look for uh, cutting other people off. I just uh, expand my longest route. I'm just going and collecting cards and I did that and then your dad happened. He cut me off and I couldn't build my longest route anymore and he was competing for the longest route. He, and he's just two green trains. Look at the end of mine didn't build any more on that part just just for the purpose to cut me off and i was so pissed because <laughs> i just had to go around and uh well luckily by then the game had ended but i couldn't build my route anymore so as a as a hint uh it's probably good to have a good idea what you want to build yeah. uh, starting the game and um what I did was I, I tried to build my tickets, uh, so I had three tickets that were quite easy to build and that worked, worked out for me. I mm -hmm. was actually able to build those. And then I shifted my strategy into, okay, let's try to claim all the long routes. So six trains, eight trains. Uh, Just and, to get a lot of points. And get a bunch of points doing that. And I... Oh, I never played I, that strategy. I managed, I managed to do that. I got mm. two six uh, routes, which are like 30 points, which is quite a lot. But if you end up with 20 points minus... Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was really, really cool. Your mom was like five or six points ahead of mm. me. She was 130, she was 113 and I was 106 or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the ladies won because we know how to build the train routes. And the guys just make chaos on the board. <laughs> and now the last lesson for, for the last German lesson for, for this video. Regarding this video, der Zug ist abgefahren. Ooh. And now, please, translate. Yes, I'm, I'm all yours. So the literal translation means the train has departed. I'm pretty sure there's a very comparable phrase in the, in the, the train has left the station or something like that. Probably. Yeah, something Der Zug like ist abgefahren in German at least uh, means uh, it's this thing. Yeah, is, it's too late. It's for too late to have things changed. It's uh, the drops is gelutscht is the <laughs> other version of that, which Sarah tries to do very. Uh, uh, noisy in my on my right. I'm having with... a chewing gum. I don't have drops. <laughs> the drops is good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's the very slight hint, very very subtle hint of him saying, "Come on, let's wrap up the video." And I'm so agreeing with you. We're I we're think done. We said good. everything that can ever be said. To no, that's not true. But in regards to the game, from us. that is true. Huh? What? We said everything we could ever say to the game. That's what I said. No, I can talk to the game a lot. Oh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, so thank you. you think? Very <laughs> So, now he's distracting me. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let us know in the comment section below. Um, uh, I hope, or we hope, you enjoyed this review of a very classic game and try to play it yourself that would be cool we're going to see you next week with a new game on the couch and until then like share subscribe do all the good stuff and uh, have a great weekend enjoy bye choo, 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 choo. Choo, choo. <laughs>